As TfL Rail becomes the Elizabeth Line this summer, West Drayton is even more firmly on the map. Let's take a look around. Well, West Drayton, it's one of those previously kind of forgotten places, isn't it, Paul? They do have a train station. Yes, and it's, of course, coming into more prominence now with the opening of the Elizabeth Line proper in the summer. And um, in West Drayton, you will find all manner of high street shops. We're starting at the post office here. It's also on the Grand Union Canal and just to give you a little bit of the perspective uh, geographically, it's about halfway between Uxbridge and Heathrow Airport. So if you're planning to travel, it's a good spot perhaps if you're looking for somewhere to live. West Drayton has seen a lot of redevelopment over the years and there is a lot of new housing development that is being built just now. And it's all because of those vital travel connections because where we got off the train at West Drayton there's also loads of buses as well that you can take uh, into Uxbridge, uh, to Ryslip, um, as far away as um, well, Heathrow Airport, it's not that far. Um, so there's great links everywhere. In West Drayton you get two for the price of one. Usually you only get one high street but here you get two because the other one's usually. Get it? So this is the Grand Union Canal. You'll have seen it on the show before because it flows quite near our home in Uxbridge and in the background you can see some of the relatively new housing that has been built um, to really sort of bolster this area. There are no shortage of places to do your weekly shop in Usley. Here we have Iceland. Aldi. And Tesco, where we're off to do our shopping. <laughs> I'm looking into my crystal ball and I see great things for our show. So please do like, comment and subscribe. This is the London Designer Outlet at Wembley Park. This is the first time that I've been here, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to find. So let's get exploring, shall we?
I managed to get two pairs of trainers from New Balance and the guy that helped me was very very good so I was very impressed by the service and I was very impressed by the shoe selection as well This London designer outlet is heaving this weekend on a Sunday on a really nice day. I think everyone's out and about getting their bargains. So happy shopping everyone! Thanks for watching our show. If you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. When we visited the Guinness storehouse in Dublin, we picked up a few bits and pieces in the shop, including this. It's a Guinness bread kit. And after reading the instructions, which I still haven't memorized, I am assured that it is actually quite easy to do because almost everything you need is in this box. Now there are a couple of items extra and that is 150ml of milk and 150ml of Guinness of course and this can is 440ml so I guess the cook gets to drink the rest. Okay let's open up and see what we've got in here. It's all very exciting it's almost like Christmas. So in the box, we have got a lovely little baking tray. So you don't even need to have all the utensils it's provided for you. And we have got a bag full of special bread mix. Okay, now I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm going to read the instructions. So we've preheated the oven to 200 Celsius. You probably heard it in the background. And I now, need, I now need to lightly oil the baking pan. So I've got some sunflower oil here. And I'm just going to put a little drop or two in, like so. And I'm just going to grab a brush. Ooh. And just oil it like this. Okay, so we need 150 ml of Guinness added into our milk. I've already poured out the correct amount of, of milk. Oops. Blimey! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I must have got a little bit shaken up. Um, okay, so here we go. And it's not chilled or anything. Uh, we just literally came back from the shop a few minutes ago and, and bought this. So it's at room temperature and that doesn't matter in the slightest. So we need to get it up to the 300 mil mark. I'm just pouring it into the milk. Oh wow, this almost looks like an Irish coffee right now. There we are, 300 mil exactly. Now, we've got our little pan. What does it say? So we now need to pour the Guinness and the milk into the mixing bag, seal and then massage to mix. Okay, so there's a little tear bit on the top, so we take that off. Come on, I don't want to rip it. And it's got the little sealant part here. Now this is all very strange, I've never made bread in a bag before. So here we go, I'm going to pour it in. Smells rather nice. Okay, now this could become rather messy. So this reminds me of sealing your liquids at the airport. Uh, I guess we want to get all the air bubbles out first of all. Mm -hmm. That is going to cause problems. So here we go. And it said to massage it, didn't it? It says 
mix it, put it into the mi mixing bag, seal and massage to mix. Okay, massaging. I'm really worried that it's going to come out through the top. Oh, I see. So just mix it all through. You might want to go and make a cup of tea or something while I do this. So I can see there's still bits of the of the mix there that hasn't been soaked up. So I thought, oh, it looks a little bit sort of soggy, but I guess that's because there's still lots of little bits and pieces that haven't absorbed the milk and the Guinness. Right. I think that seems to be fairly well mixed. So what do we do next? It says, gently squeeze the dough into the oiled baking pan. Right, okay. I'll just give it another little mix for good measure. Oh, I think there's still some bits there. Right, that should do it. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's still little bits. Get them all squeezed in. Oh, do you know what? It smells like it smells like a brewery in here now, but a bakery at the same time. Right. Let's get pouring. There it goes. Oh yes. That is a dough. Trying to get it all out. It, it almost feels a little bit like an icing bag. Now I can see there are some bits that haven't absorbed the, uh, the mixture. So I think what I might do is once it's all out is just get a spoon and give it a little final mix around yeah i suppose it's difficult because you can't see what's going on in the the middle of it all and now it's like squeezing toothpaste get all those last bits out i think that's about as good as we're going to get put that away right So with this spoon here, I'm just going to mix these last little bits through. Make sure it's all properly, properly absorbed. Okay. Right, now what does it say? Okay. Um, make a cross in the top and sprinkle with a little flour. Ah, oh, well, this is quite interesting because look, I have actually got a special um, knife. It's not really a knife. It's a, it's a bread knife. That's what it is. Yeah, bread knife uh, with the Guinness logo on it. I got that many years ago. So it says make a cross. Oh, yes, it is going to appear with a cross. Look at that. Oops, it goes flying. Like that. And we have our flour. So sprinkle with a little flour on top. Maybe a little more just around the edges. Okay, and now it's time to pop it in the oven. We bake it for 35 to 40 minutes at 200 Celsius. So let's go over here. Right, here's the oven, preheated. We'll pop that in there. And Put our convection on up to 200 Celsius for 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Let's see how that turns out. Ta-da! The moment of truth. Ooh. Oh, it smells nice. I can, I can smell the Guinness coming off this. Now, I think I might just need to ease it out of this. 
And oh, can you hear the crunch? Oh, I think this is cut to perfection. Let's see if we can get it out. That would be the question. Right. Oh, look at that. Mmm. It's still warm. Now, we have cooled it on this wire rack, actually, for the past couple of hours. But um, I'm going to cut a slice now. If I can get into it. At least it's properly cooked. Can you see that? Oh, it smells absolutely divine. Now, you could eat this on its own. But oh, oh, no, 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 no. I have butter. You've got to have butter. You always have butter. Yeah. So let's get some lovely butter on this. Spreadable butter, of course. Don't and be stingy, right? Do you need more? Cut it? Mm, yes, I think I do. <laughs> oh, let's lathers of it. Was it our health episode <laughs> a week or so ago you know you never know okay so let's take a taste of this the proof is in the tasting mm. actually i can't really taste that much guinness in it so so you, you you could lace a cake with guinness and then give it to your granny and and see what happens as do you, they, think, hmm? do you think we need to put some more oh. guinness in it next time i don't know I thought it was a bit too soggy going in, but this has turned out absolutely fabulous. It really is. Um, it's a bit like wheaten bread, um, which is a great Irish staple. And this crunchy bit is absolutely divine. You know something? You can have this for dinner. In fact, I just might. Oh, and there's one other thing. Mm. <laughs> I nearly forgot. I don't have a Guinness glass. I broke the last one we had, so uh, we're using a punk IPA, but this is the remainder of the Guinness that we put into the cake. So it's probably gone flat now, but anyway. Mm. Guinness is Guinness, though. And Guinness is good for you. Now, before we go today, I do want to apologise for the sound issues on part of this film, um, which you can see that we had to use some of Paul's footage, which... Um, didn't focus in on me in certain bits. <laughs> of course, I am the star of the show. Um, and we've also had a few <laughs> sound issues on Paul shaking his head. And we've also had a few sound issues on some previous films. Now, we did all those films on the same day. And we now know what the root cause of the issue is. Uh, we promise it will not happen again. We are not going to use those methods again. So it just remains for me to say thank you for sticking with it. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe and cheers, everyone. <laughs> Down it in two. Mm. Okay. Yes. <coughs> oh my That's god. That's one in the wash now. Bye everyone. Mm. Oh, Delicious.